Good evening from northern France where England have been training as they prepare to take on Japan in their second pool match in Nice on Sunday. They've been training without Tom Curry. He took no part in their session today for the second day running. Remember the England flanker is banned for this game against Japan and the following game against Chile. But they will be able to call on number eight Billy Vanapola who has served his suspension. George Ford will definitely start at fly half after his superb performance against Argentina in Marseille on Saturday night. Remember, England still without Owen Farrell, their captain, for one more game. The mood in the camp has been notably more positive and vibrant since Saturday night's win. Players with smiles on faces looking very relaxed indeed. None more so than prop Joe Marler, who I caught up with earlier on. It's always a better mood after a win. Of course it is. And... We really enjoyed the work that we put in on on Saturday night, and you know we needed to we needed to kick on and and go for Japan this week. Has there been a bit of a pressure release getting that result? All the question marks in the build up, the adversity you guys have faced as well. Yeah, I think there was always going to be pressure, regardless of whether we won four out of four or none out of four in our warm up games, because Argentina have been so good over the last three or four years actually and we know how good they are in World Cups so them being the opening game it was always going to be a, a, a big contest and then after three minutes it was even bigger um, when we went down a man but to come through that adversity both prior to the World Cup and and in those 80 minutes on Saturday night we we were proud of our efforts Tom Curry's red card has been a big talking point in the camp and outside, as have cards at this World Cup so far, because while Curry got a red card for his head-to-head -head clash, we saw similar incidences in the games between Scotland and South Africa and also Japan and Chile, which went unpunished. England defence coach Kevin Sinfield says it's difficult for the players. Uh, we've got to understand that it's, it's part of the sport now and, um, you know, unfortunately we've had to deal. I think, I think we're four and six, I'd say, not just three and four, so... Uh, we understand we're getting pretty good at defending with 14 men, uh, but we, we want to have everybody, our full complement on the field for as long as possible at all times. So um, we hope to improve that area, but it's, it's tricky to pinpoint exactly what that is. You mentioned it was unlucky. Did you consider contesting the red? Uh, like I said, we want to move on now. Um, there's been a fair bit of noise around this group unnecessarily around the red cards and some of it we understand but we just felt we need to move forward and control what we can. England preparing here in northern France but the match is down in Nice on Sunday night 750 miles away. They'll fly there on Friday after air traffic control strikes were averted. 200 miles away is Tour where James Savundra, my colleague, has been with the Ireland team. Yes, Ireland have been here in Tour this week, their tournament base for the Rugby World Cup as they gear up for their second match of the tournament against Tonga on Saturday. And for the world's number one ranked side, they're hoping this will be the year that they end that World Cup curse. They've never been past a World Cup quarter final. In fact, they've never won a knockout match at this competition. And one man featuring in his fourth World Cup is Keith Earls, now 35 years of age. Now he became an Irish centurion last month in the match against England. So I asked him, already is this tournament feeling slightly different to the previous three? Definitely a bit more relaxed, I think, in the, vi in, in the environment. Um, but I think we, we know to deal with pressure a lot better now as a group. Um, but we know, we know how big these, these tournaments are. And, you know, we have, we've had a good welcome in tour and, you know, it's been, it's been great, yeah. And do you feel like, as a side, you've ticked off every box along the way to being here? 26 wins from your last 28 matches to be successful here in France, left no stone unturned? Yeah, we've, we've obviously achieved a lot and we know, we know when we're on it and we're switched on and we play our game plan. We know we're well capable of, of competing and, and doing special things, but... You know, again, I know it's a cliche and you've always heard it from us, we, we won't be looking past Saturday, but obviously we've, did, we've, we've touched it and, um, you know, something we, we are confident in our, in our ability. So, yeah, we'd be, um, we'd be looking to hopefully go, go deep if, if, if we reach our standards.
So that's wow. Keith Earls, who will be hoping his fourth Rugby World Cup delivers something very special after Ireland crashed out of the quarter-final stage in their previous three. And Ireland fans heading to Nantes this weekend, we're pleased to know that the national anthems that you'll hear before the matches, they're being re-recorded. Now, they face plenty of criticism in the opening weekend of the World Cup. The anthem generated by a children's choir. And those Ireland fans, we hope for a better atmosphere in the stadium. Now, that's the case. But as far as the Ireland team are concerned, they'll travel to Nantes tomorrow. Andy Fowle will name his team for that second test match of the World Cup against Tonga as Ireland bid to get out of a challenging pool and do something they've not done before, get past the quarter-final stage of a Rugby World Cup. Well, the Wales head coach, Warren Gatland, has made 13 changes to the starting lineup for the Pool C match on Saturday against Portugal. He's retained just two from the side that beat Fiji. They're the wing three quarter, Luis Rees Zamet, and number eight, Tau Lupe Falatau. The co captain, Dowie Lake, will lead Wales. He's recovered from injury. Scrum half, Thomas Williams, will win his 50th cap. And there are first World Cup starts for the centre, Mason Grady, and lock, Chris. Si Siunza. <laughs>